Hello Virgo and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for your Astro Tarot reading for the Gemini season. And we're looking at what you need to know now about these energy shifts. So these messages are for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Venus, and or Rising. And because this is a general reading, please only go with the messages that resonate with you. So we have the sun in Gemini on Friday, May 20th, and it's there until Tuesday, June 21st, when the sun slides into Cancer, welcoming the summer solstice. Okay, we have a new moon in Gemini on Monday, May 30th. This is a great time for setting new intentions. Uh, then on Tuesday, May 31st, we have Mars in Aries, its ruling sign. This is big positive energy that's going to help you to follow through on those new intentions. And then on Friday, June 3rd, we have Mercury stationing direct. Although it doesn't leave its storm until Saturday, June 11th, when Mercury conjuncts Uranus in Taurus. Okay, let's look at the energy oracle cards and start revealing the energies for you, Virgo. Okay, we have number 40 with the sixth chakra, the Archangel Metatron. Now, this is a third eye awakening. This could have you being very inspired, also receiving uh, communications from your muses, because this is about inspiration. This is also about your psychic ability. So this is also getting in touch with your new guides, as well as uh, the new energies and how they're shifting within your mind, shifting your ideas, because we do have that Mercury conjuncting Uranus, which is bringing out more of your individuality, more of your talents and skills, making you more self-aware, but also much more psychically attuned to the changing world around you. Okay, then we have number 37, third chakra, Archangel Shamu. Uh, this is that confidence Mars is going to be bringing into you uh, when it slides into its ruling sign, Aries. You're going to get a big boost of that energy. Okay, on Wednesday, June 8th, we have an earthy grand trine, which is going to have a big impact for you, Virgo, because we have the Virgo moon trining with Capricorn Pluto in retrograde, trining that Taurus Mercury. And keep in mind, Mercury is still in its storm at this time. So this is also a large dose of lucky vibes, but you have to act on it. Trines tend to make us really comfortable in that energy, and we fail to act on the opportunities and take advantage of those that, you know, those opportunities that come to us that could help elevate us. And then on Tuesday, June 14th, we have the full moon in Sagittarius, at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so please adjust to your time zone on the planet. Now, the Sagittarius moon is going to be part of a T-square with the Gemini sun and a Pisces Neptune. This can leave you feeling a little groggy in a brain fog, so you might want to lie low and avoid arguments, especially with passive aggressive people because they will zap your energy. And let's look at the next card for you. Okay, eight, indecision, okay. Yeah, Virgo, lay low during that time because you're not gonna be able to make any decisions. 
don't sign any contracts and don't feel like you're being forced into making a decision before you're comfortable with that because during that T square now Mercury is out of its storm by June 14th but you still need a little bit of time to before you can decide so instead try to stay focused on romance because on Sunday June 19th which happens to be Father's Day uh, we have the Taurus Venus sextiling that Pisces Neptune. So, you know, this might be a good time to just kind of go have a romantic getaway, but don't make any decisions. Just relax. Okay, and for your final energy card, oh, door to spirit with number 32. Very nice. Yeah, you'll be glad that you waited because with this third eye, I like how you have the third eye here starting things out and it's like you're, you're waiting for these energies to shift through and you have this confidence coming in, this motivation. And then once the door to spirit opens, you'll know what decision you need to make. This indecision will clear up just like the breeze and you have all this light flying through and you'll be set free from that decision. So we also have on Monday, June 20th, that Pisces moon, because now the moon has shifted into Pisces, sextiling the Uranus and Taurus, Venus in Taurus, and Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. Now that Neptune or the Pisces moon is going to conjunct Neptune in Pisces. This is going to enhance your sociability. You're going to be a lot more friendly. People are gonna be a lot more friendly and you'll have heartfelt communications. And that could be a very spiritual kind of communication within yourself or perhaps with a significant other that, you know, and what I mean by a significant other is that this could be a friend, a romantic partner for a mentor because on the summer solstice, we have this huge confidence and charisma and extroversion and charm flowing in. And this is going to have a Mercury in Taurus trining the Capricorn Pluto in retrograde. And this could be a time when you could meet the one. Now, again, this could be a romantic partner this could also be one of your soulmates. What I mean by that is a soul friend. So this could be somebody who is a friend who comes in, the door of spirit is open and comes in and it's a very serendipitous meeting. This could also be a business mentor that comes in, somebody that helps elevate you. Okay, let's look at the Island Time Wellness Love Oracle cards, since there is some romance in the air. What do you need to know about that, Virgo? Okay, we have Cupid's arrow. Have faith, love is coming. Surprise, invitation, or meeting. And then there's a hesitation. Okay, we do have that indecision right here too. Okay, next we have the X. Break up, separation, stop the pattern, a silent treatment and abandonment. Okay, now this could mean that um, you meet the one and the relationship that you're in just is not the right one anymore. So there's a breakup, there's a separation. Um, however, if you're already feeling that, you may want to have this separation. Now, keep in mind, 
the acts and having to do with relationships. This can have to do with, of course, a relationship, but it could also have to do with a business relationship as well, or with a friend. You're evolving, you're spiritually elevating, and there could be people that are in your life that don't understand that, and they no longer resonate with you. You feel the, the lower vibes, and it's uncomfortable. And sometimes it's just time to let those relationships go. And by doing so, you're opening up the door for Cupid's arrow to fly in and bring this new meeting. Now, again, this could be a meeting with one of your soulmates, you know, a soul friend. And it could be with several of them because look, we have several spirit lights coming in. Now let's get into your tarot, Virgo. Go a little bit deeper into this reading. And we start with the Eight of Cups, the Eight of Chalices. We have the Ace of Swords. And then we have the Nine of Wands and the Two of Pentacles. Okay, here we have you walking away from a situation, you know, perhaps walking away from relationships that no longer uh, work for you. Uh, there's no harmony there. And the reason why you're feeling that disharmony is because it's trying to make you uncomfortable so that you can move on to a better place, a better energy space. So you're walking away and perhaps spending some time alone so that you can be with your thoughts. Perhaps you need to really clear your mind and stand strong in who you are and you're getting back in touch with who you are. That's why you're having this third eye expansion or awakening. And when you're in that state, this is not the time to make decisions. And with the nine of wands, you're putting up boundaries. You're setting a boundary saying, I'm not gonna make a decision right now. I'm going to wait until I get things balanced out here with the two of pentacles. Now with the Two of Pentacles, this could have to do with your work or finances because Pentacles do represent our business and finances. This could be you uh, stretching yourself a little too thin and that's why you need to walk away from a situation, regather yourself and in that time, you know, you have this little community here that you can talk with and this could also certainly be talking with yourself. There's nothing wrong with that because sometimes that's the way that you hear yourself, your body awareness, if you're opening up to that communication of self-awareness with your body and your confidence. And you will find this balance because we do have this beautiful energy coming in. Next, we have the Ace of Chalices. Okay, here we have the full moon. This could be that full moon in Sagittarius that occurs on Tuesday, June 14th. But keep in mind, it has that T-square, so you want to avoid the arguments. That's the way that you're going to heal. This is the walking away from those arguments so that you can do some spiritual healing. This is the Holy Grail. And perhaps you might be doing a full moon intention ritual in which you are focusing on your self-healing. Next, we have the Queen of Wands. This is ruled by Leo. And so there could be some Leo influences, a Leo person. This could most certainly be uh, any of the fire signs, Aries, Leo, 
and Sagittarius. So this could also represent that Sagittarius moon, but from a feminine perspective, the divine feminine perspective. Perhaps you need to uh, get more in touch with your intuitive self. Or perhaps it is uh, your creative self, your artistic self that wants to come out and you're really feeling the confidence to move there. Notice we have the flame and the solar plexus sphere in the same area on these cards. And the with the ace here, the ace of swords, you're rooting your ideas in your creativity. So I feel like many of you Virgos may be thinking about going into business for yourself, but you're trying to make that transition here. That's why you're experiencing some of this indecision. Should I, should I not? Okay, the Eight of Swords. This is setting yourself from the fear. And that's what you're going to do here. You set up these boundaries uh, while you made your decision. Perhaps you just needed the the uh, time alone before you made your decision or speak with those that you trust for advice, your counsel, if you will, and work through those fears. We do have a new beginning because we have these storks flying in the air uh, through the storm. So this is uh, breaking free from the storm. And we do have that Mercury in its storm during June. You know, it doesn't leave its storm until Saturday, June 11th, but it goes direct on the 3rd. So there's, you know, a good chunk of time when it's still in its storm. And the Eight of Swords is, um, you know, really going inward. Because by knowing your deepest fears is the only way that you're going to work through uh, the indecision that you have here. Ah, talk about a storm, everything falls over. Okay, and then we have the Ten of Swords. Yeah, something's going to come to an end. And we have all these butterflies being released. So there is something beautiful coming to an end that is going to set you free. Now, the Ten of Swords is actually leaving a negative situation. So it's to me, I'm seeing it that a negative situation is coming to an end so that you can then balance yourself. You then know what decision you want to make. And we also have the Axe here where you're finally ending something. Perhaps you need to see that there is something on the other side of the door before you let go of the old. Okay, let's look at your moon magic cards because we do have the moon showing up here in the artwork on your cards. And up here's your artwork. And we have the waning crescent moon. Gratefully, I surrender my struggle. Nice. And look how the cup, as it's pouring out the water, surrendering. Water is, is flow. It surrenders. It yields. So be like water, my friend. Okay, now let's check out your starlight cards because this is, after all, a uh, astrology-based reading. And we have, oh, the dark. Take a moment to sit under the star-speckled sky, listening to crickets and breathing in the cool night air. Okay, yeah, right here. We have it right here. Hanging out in the cool night air and working through your doubts and fears. You know, breathing in, being here now rather than living in the energy 
and time sphere of that fear that's keeping you bound to a certain time zone or a certain timeline and it keeps interfering with your current timeline and you're going to give it the X so you can be set free and uh, can see your path clearly. This could also be your new spirit guide team coming in as well. And you're really going to feel that love all around you, Virgo. Okay, for your sweet dreams, we have nurture. I open my arms and wrap around those that need nurturing starting with myself yes i have recently discovered that practicing gratitude for yourself i mean certainly practicing gratitude is good but you're but we tend to show gratitude for things that are outside of us start with practicing gratitude with yourself being grateful for the body that you have, that is the temple of your spirit, um, your abilities that you came here, what you're capable of doing. Uh, be grateful for your skills and talents. And then from there, you really do bring that energy into yourself. And it really is very grounding. And then once you feel grounded in yourself, then reach out with that energy that's within you, that confidence. And then reach out intuitively to guide you and open you up, open a new path for you that feels more harmonious in where you're at in your life, where you've evolved. Because now that you have been awoken or your third eye's being expanded, uh, you have to move on. It's, it's time to grow. You can't, and here you have the nurturing. So start with yourself. Show gratitude for yourself by taking care of yourself by doing that which feels right for yourself. Okay, here's your heart and soul card. And we have, the heart is the true seat of power. So just love everyone involved and all will unfold gracefully in its own time. An angel watches over you with patience, love and perseverance. All will work out fine be guided by the wisdom in your heart. Yeah, bring that gratitude for yourself into your heart. And it will fill you with that love. And that's what you can expand and unfold. Let everything unfold in its own time. And be grateful that you're back up on your timeline. Okay, Virgo, I'm going to end your reading here. I hope that you found it helpful. Until next time, take care.